Hi, welcome back to Repairing Lawnmowers for Profit. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make money selling lawnmowers. You can see here, I've got um, one of my particular favourite lawnmowers, a Mountfield SP470 lawnmower in front of me. These are the original ones that I used to do. There's hundreds of videos on these on my channel. I'm going to show you all the basic skills you need to make yourself some extra income repairing these lawnmowers. And this is a mess. This has got bits hanging off it. It's got no pull cord, the exhaust's hanging off. Generally, it's just a mess. But you, the first step in this process is you've got to find one of these lawnmowers cheaply. So it's never actually been easier to find these lawnmowers to repair. I get a lot of messages saying, I can't find any lawnmowers to repair. When I started doing this, I had to look in the local supermarket on them little cards that people put up, post office windows. But nowadays, you've got eBay, you've got Gumtree, you've got Facebook, Marketplace. You can even set up a group on Facebook to find these. And as I was saying before, you need to find these cheaply. And I picked this one up on Gumtree for £20. The guy was asking 30 for it. Offered him 20 no problem, come and collect it. So because of COVID at the minute, he's dropped it off for me as well. So for £20, I've had this dropped off on my front grass, which is fantastic. I'm going to show you everything right from the beginning, right to the end. And I'm expecting to make at least £80 when I fix this lawnmower up. So if you're looking to make yourself some extra income, I suggest you stick with this video. I mean, after all, if you were looking on online at some sort of, I don't know what people do, Forex trading or whatever it might be, if you could give somebody £20 and return it for 80 you'd do it all day long and that's effectively what I do with these lawnmowers. And if you're watching this in winter, you're at an even better advantage because these go even cheaper. Who wants to keep a petrol lawnmower in winter? You get these from people who've moved house, just want rid of it, can't be bothered to take it to the tip and often for a tenner, 15, 20 pounds, you can go and pick these lawnmowers up, repair them in winter, save them up and sell them in the spring and summer months. So let's get started with this mower. I'm going to show you everything, the whole process I'm going to do with this lawnmower to make myself around 80 pounds profit. Anybody in the UK who's over a certain age might remember the A-Team. I used to love the A-Team as a kid. It was one of them things at the beginning, it said if you can find them, you can hire the A-Team. Well, it's similar with this. If you can find one of these engines, one of these Briggs and Stratton engines, see this little logo on here, with one of these carbon tank setups like this. This is the most simple style of lawnmower to get to start repairing lawnmowers for profit. Two bolts here, you can take off the entire carbon tank air filter and everything, put a little gasket in here and you can get this running again like new. I'm going to show you how to service all that up, take the air filter off, we're going to strip the whole thing down, put a pull cord on, change the oil, change the plug, clean the underside of it, sharpen the blade and usually I can do all these things in around an hour so if you think you can make about £80 with a little bit of knowledge just by learning some basic mechanical skills it's probably a lot easier than anything you can do online to make that sort of money so I'm going to start stripping this down, I'm going to show you the entire process and how this looks at the end I'm going to show you the actual sale that I make at the end and tell you how much I've made as well great lawnmowers these, these are the ones you are looking for if you're starting out the very first thing you're going to want to do with any lawnmower is take off this spark plug lead what I would usually do at this point is I would usually try and start this lawnmower up and if it runs I would extract the oil and all the fuel out of it so I can tip this over or do what I need to do but obviously with no pull cord on here I can't actually start this mower up but there's something else you need to check and I'm actually going to tip this lawnmower on its side I'm going to check the blade isn't bent underneath I'm going to have a look at the underside of the deck and then I'm going to extract all the fluids out of here from, this is the oil and this from the petrol. Take that all out. I might even take the engine off this so I can paint this deck and make it look a little bit newer. But you don't need any special tools to do any of these things. So if you're thinking you're going to need some real expensive tools to make yourself a profit, you're not. I basically started this with uh, some tools I found in the garage from my first house that were kind of covered in paint. So if you've got a spanner and a screwdriver, you should be uh, good to go. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to tip it up slightly. You never want to tip one of these right over if you can help it. And if you saw my last video, which I'll put a car to in the top right hand corner now, you'll see why you get lots of uh, spitting and popping and burning oil problems. So, what I like to do is I get these and I tip them against something like this, just so I can have a quick look underneath and we can check the blade. Just from a safety point of view as well, I just want to show this. You can see these pins here, how they sit through the blade. That's what you want to see and you want to check you've got an even gap here on the blade and it's not touching the side of the deck at either side so I would check that you want to clean off all the bottom of this I usually do this with a pressure washer or a wire brush and I'm going to take off this actual drive belt under here which is under this guard and clean all this out make sure it's clean and tidy 
and uh, also make sure that there's a belt on there so that the self-drive works. If you don't have a self-drive on the one you picked up then it's one less problem but you'll find that these uh, resell for a lot more money with the self-drives on and particularly make sure you buy one with a grass box. Okay now luckily I have an oil extractor so I'm going to pump the oil extractor in here, pump all the oil out, pump all the fuel out but if you don't have one obviously you can just tip this out into a tub. Try not to tip the mower all the way over, if you lean it over you should get most of the oil out and one tip I will say is if you can get the lawnmower running first to warm the oil up it will come out a lot easier. So I'm going to quickly use my extractor to remove all this old fuel, any old oil and then that way I can do what I need to do with this, I can even tip this right over, take the engine off or whatever I want to do to clean the underside of the deck and perhaps paint this. Before I pump this out I just want to show a few things as well. This is when you know like a lawnmower has been tinkered with because on this model they've split the sticker to get to this screw. This one's missing. They've obviously lost a few bolts because the exhaust guard's not on right so there'll be a bolt missing under there. There's a bolt missing at the other side. Um, it's, this is kind of a really bad example of one you pick up which is why I've decided to kind of film this video because this is a kind of worst case scenario really because and it's filthy as well isn't it so there's a few parts missing which tell you that it's been tampered with and another classic sign something that people do which is a bit weird is they cut the pull cord off and I think it's so you can't attempt to start it if you go and pick it up so it was cheap and cheerful but these are good mowers when these are serviced up there's some good profit in these so I'm going to drop that in there extract all this fuel and oil and I can tip this lawnmower up clean the underside of it take the belt guard off and have a look round as I say, I started with no tools, I had to sort of build up with a bit of profit, I've reinvested, buy myself things like this uh, oil extractor, um, but I didn't start with all this kind of stuff, and you don't need it to start this business, so I'm not for it. One little thing I normally do actually, which I forgot to do, is I just grab something after you've removed the spark plug, and I just tip it up like that, just to make everything fall to the back, and you can actually get quite a bit more fluid out of these mowers especially the oil as well. I'm going to do exactly the same thing here with the oil as well and again you can always tip this up and somebody's mentioned to me on the previous videos something I never really remember is that there is actually an oil drain plug on the bottom of these engines but I don't want to have to lift it up and put it on anything just to drain it out so I'm going to pop that in there and we'll drain this oil out. And these are just really handy to have, you can see how the uh, actual lines just filled up with all the old oil. I will link to a cheap one of these in the video description. I'll also link to a few parts that you might want to actually service this mower, including the gaskets and the, all the air filters and stuff. It's all real cheap stuff, especially for the profit you can potentially make. So I'll take a look in the description of the video for any parts for these little Briggs and Stratton engines. So with all those fluids out I can now tip this a little bit further up. I just don't want to tip it right over. This kind of right, it's against my bench. And what I normally do is I normally just get a pressure washer, clean the whole underside off, and I'm going to take that belt guard off. I have actually just had a quick look, and there is a belt around the back, so that's good news. Right, so I'm going to clean off the underside of this using a pressure washer. And again, if you don't have a pressure washer like I didn't use to, just get a wire brush, probably about two pound from uh, Wilkinson's or Asda or somewhere, and just clean off the grass from the underside of the deck. And with all the underside clean as well, because I'm stripping this completely down, I'm going to clean all this mess off with the pressure washer as well. And I always do this, I like to do it because it makes things easier to get off underneath without having to work around grass, it saves a lot of mess. And as I'm stripping it all down anyway, it's all going to get dried off and put back together, so I'm going to take a load of this mess off with this pressure washer. So I'm going to get a bit in depth in this video, I'm going to do a few things that you might not need to do, I might even take the engine off and do all sorts of things like that. Now you don't necessarily need to do this with every lawnmower you repair for profit just to make yourself that extra bit of income. What I'm going to show you is all the things you could potentially do and the reason I'm showing them to you is because everything that you can do enhances the price you can get for the lawnmower. So if you service the carb, swap the plug, put a new air filter on, change the oil, you can list all these things as benefits 
when you come to listing these lawnmowers to sell and the more benefits you can list the more potential profit there is in these lawnmowers so if there's a few things in this video that you don't think you need to do when you put your first lawnmower up then don't do them it's um, just a simply a guide video showing you a little bit more in depth everything you can potentially do this lawnmower's quite a mess and I've just had a look underneath I'm not entirely sure that the engine's even bolted on properly so in this case I might even take this engine off and as I've said before, yours might not even have a self-drive on, so there's um, not even that aspect of this to worry about. So, if there's anything you think you don't need to do, feel free to skip it, but just be aware that all the things that you do do, you can list as a potential benefit. One thing you should know is which way to tip these mowers up. Ideally, they tell you to tip them back, like that. But it's not practical, I don't think, to work underneath them unless you've got a bench, really. But if you're just trying this for the first time in your garden, always tip them with this carburetor side up and the air filter side up and the exhaust facing down. So I've got all the fluid out of this. The next job I've got to do is remove this blade. If you've got some uh, basic spanners, you should be able to get that off. If you hold this and undo it, I've got an impact tool which I've saved up for and reinvested some of my profits into which makes that easier so I'm going to take the blade off I'm going to sharpen that up and I'm going to take off these which are a little bit of a pain to get off these screws because I want to remove this belt guard cover here and clean all the grass out from the underside of this and the reason I look under these mowers when I buy them is for things like this where I don't potentially think that they've even got see that screw move there I don't even think they've even got the bolts through correctly holding this engine on so this is why you really do have to check these things from a safety aspect before you sell these mowers so I don't even think the engine's bolted on this properly and for that reason I'll probably take it off but to start with let's remove this bolt here and get these awkward screws out of here and get this belt guard off and cleaned out underneath and when we've got this off we can get access to actually taking this engine off so as I said I used to, used to use a spanner to get these blades off it can be a bit of a pain especially if you've got a bent blade and occasionally I used to take it down to my local car garage and I'd take it off with an impact but again when you get started doing this you can reinvest some profits I've got this Ryobi 18 volt impact drill here and I use this again without wanting to sound like an Amazon sales pitch I'll link these in the description Again, make sure the spark plug's removed. And you see, with the right tools, this makes this job really quite simple. And I know from experience that these screws here that can be a real pain. These rust off and round off. These can be a pain to get off. Sometimes the only way I can get them out is actually get some pliers on and start turning them. But to give yourself a fighting chance, give them a wire brush up. Spray a little bit of WD-40 on as well. Get these as clean as you can. And get um, that cross headed screwdriver in there. Sometimes, as I've said, you just have to get something on there and undo them. There can be a real pain to get off. And if you've got one of these little tools with a lot of weight behind it, this can be invaluable for removing these screws. And the weight behind it just gives you enough leverage sometimes to get these screws off. You can always cut them off, of course, or you can always get a little Dremel and go across them and put a slat in them and just undo them and stuff but they can be a bit of a pain so when you've got them off there's a, another nut to take off here and again you can just use a spammer and then we can take off this actual drive belt cover here what you'll sometimes find is when you've got this actual cover off here is that this is full to the top of grass bits like this um, not too bad but the belt's still on it's still attached around the back here, so hopefully the drive will work. Pins are on this blade adapter, and I wanted to show you here, there's not actually the proper bolts through this engine. So I'm going to zip these off. I'm actually going to take this engine off this mower. And I'm definitely not prepared to sell this until I know the engine's bolted on properly. No. Take that one off there. Grab that there. There, which is slightly smaller and this engine is going to fall off the other side but I'm not too bothered about that okay I have to put a spanner around the other side of that hold it together so I can get this engine off no problem I've unbolted that so this engine hopefully should come off all the uh, recoil has all come off as well it's just fallen off there's no screws in anything someone's had a real good play about in here so you can see how this engine just comes off here I need to unhook this cable here, I'll show you how to do that now, really quite simple. 
So as you're probably beginning to realise this lawnmower really is kind of a worst case scenario thing but you can see here this actual catch here all you need to do is squeeze these parts and it pushes back through this way you don't pull it out here it goes back through here so I'm going to squeeze that part pull that cable out so you really are going to get a good in-depth tutorial here of um, <laughs> kind of the worst it's going to be for you but at least I'm covering a lot of things so sometimes you can do this with your fingers you just squeeze these parts here push these back through like this unhook the cable should just come off from underneath like this that's it I can lift this whole engine is now off out of the way I can drop this on my bench and we can service this up so the other advantage is I've got this deck now all loose I can turn this over paint the underside of it do whatever I need to do put a little bit of paint on this and make it look a, a little bit more like new I'll show you how to do that as well some really cheap hammerite paint that actually really is quite a good match it's actually one of my uh, favorite tips really so while I've got this engine off I've actually drained out this uh, oil from the bottom taking this plug off the bottom this uh, this just lies under here you can pull this out from underneath here you can see in there just taking that out from there so I'll let that drain out and if you've watched any of my previous videos I said I didn't think my extractor was working too well and obviously with all that oil left it isn't so I think I'm going to have to invest a bit more money back in there but that is um, out and I don't have the correct tool for doing that if anyone knows the correct tool for taking these um, oil drain plugs out of these, these sump plug drain uh, plugs out let me know because I'm currently using this square that I've got on my socket set for kind of extending my socket so if you know the right tool for that I won't mind one of them so we've got that out I've uh, let all that drain out, I'm going to put this back in tighten it up then I'm going to show you how to do the basic servicing most of the time all you need to do is service the carb and um, which is on here, this petrol tank just wants cleaning off and stuff I'm going to show you some other things you may or may not need to do I'll go through the whole process and once you've got all the knowledge you can do this as well and it's not always um, this in depth as I keep saying most of the time all you need to do is service this carb change the oil, put a spark plug in, sharpen the blade up, tidy the machine up, make sure all the bolts are in so I'm going to go in depth in this video so you've got all the information you might need to repair these and make yourself some extra income so I often get asked why I've put a massive hole in my bench and the reason for that is I like to sometimes just pull these blade adapters off they always come off as easy as this actually should wriggle off and I can drop the shaft here down the hole and work on this before I do that I just want to look at this and make sure that the keyways are right on the bottom of this shaft so if I can turn this by hand I can check this so what I want to look at here is this keyway make sure there's no massive chunks out of this it's all in one piece and that way I know the blade hasn't hit something solid and bent it underneath and another telltale sign of a blade hitting something underneath is these pins on the bottom that I keep referring to will have broken off so I can get this uh, here and I can drop it to this little hole here look under this yes, and I can sit the whole thing on my bench and although it rocks about a little bit I can actually work on this engine and again you don't have to do this you can leave it on the mower 99 times out of 100 I'll leave it on the mower but this is a real mess and I'm going to show you in depth exactly everything it needs doing Right, the next stage of this, this is where you're going to need to do 90% of the work on most of the mows you get. If you can do this one repair that I'm going to show you, which is how to service this actual carburetor here and put a diaphragm and gasket in here. If you can do this, which takes me about five minutes to do now, I've done it loads of times, you can make yourself quite a lot of extra income. So what you need to do to start with is you need to remove the air filter. So for those that are new to this, this is the air filter here. The box on the top, this has got a filter in it. So they need flatted his screwdriver I'm going to undo this it's quite a long screw in this quite a long thread so it might take you a little bit to get out normally when it gets to there you can kind of flick it out with your hands and pull it up like that you can see how long that is take that out under here you'll see there's actually an air filter in here as you can see it's black and it all wants a good clean it should be yellow like you can see on the back there um, and this is what I like to see it's still got all these governor springs attached a lot of the time when you'll pick one of these lawnmowers up people have played around with these 
and they've tried to manipulate the springs and they do that because they've had a lawnmower that's been revving up and down. On this occasion I've still got both of these springs, these are called governor springs, they grow across here, you've got the smaller one here and the longer one across here and that's great. I'll show you when we've cleaned all this up how this all goes back together and the main thing to take from this part of the video is that you can see how they move and when I'm actually moving this white plastic part on the top here, this air vein here you can see how they all spring backwards and forwards and they bounce around that's the main thing you need to remember so next we're going to take off this carburetor and this petrol tank and this is really simple to do all you need to do is undo this bolt here there's usually one here which is a 10mm one which is missing and then the whole thing just pulls off the engine and you can service it separately so you might need a basic socket to get this off but again you could just get a spanner in here and take this off and I'm going to unzip this once I've got the right part on here it's actually a 12mm socket you'll need on here if you get yourself a set of spanners from about I don't know let's say 8mm to around 20mm you'll have everything you need really and they don't even need to be good just basic cheap ones you can get I'll do to get you started so still the wrong size um, as I say I'm no genius at doing all this stuff it's just trial and error and you learn as you go along so take that off there put the right part on here and zip this off and these on every other lawnmower getting the carbon tank off is more difficult these are the easiest ones to do so take that off there and you this will if you've never seen this before you'll be kind of amazed here take that part out it comes off and then the whole thing just pulls and there's a little linkage down here and hopefully you can see just swinging around if you tilt that look at that the whole thing's come off the engine and this is what you'll normally just need to do when you get a lawnmower that's revving up and down and not running right that somebody's selling is service this part if you can learn how to do this one repair you can make yourself some extra profit so we've got that off I'm going to move this all out of the way I'm going to clean this up off camera so I can work on it a bit better I'm going to show you how to service this car which involves fitting a little diaphragm and gasket in here which costs probably about oh, two pound link to one in the description again so you can find the right one but everything wants to be cleaned off before we start taking this apart and everything wants cleaning off in here as well and you might be thinking what what's going on here what's he doing with this this, this take it to the tip but I'll tell you now I've seen a lot worse than this and a lot of it's just dirt just wants cleaning off and I know it looks a little bit old it looks like it's been set outside but I'm going to guarantee you that this engine will purr like a kitten when we get this serviced up and you won't believe it when you see it running so don't be discouraged if you get one that looks as bad as this and um, stick with it because th there isn't that much to do with these mowers to get them running really well and once you get to this stage with a lot of them you might think oh look this is ridiculous but actually it's really quite straightforward so while I remember, we'll remove this spark plug. These are NGK spark plugs, B2LM. If you haven't guessed by now, link in the description. So, put that in there. Oh, that's loose anyway, I've just undone that. You can do that again with a spanner, or you can get a spark plug tool like this. Take that out, and this is going straight in the dustbin. That looks very old, so that can go. And what I'll normally do sometimes is spin this flywheel at the top, poke something down here, and make sure the piston goes up and down, make sure we've still got off compression when we put this back together. So I'm going to do that now, make sure that this is, isn't actually a Duff engine. That rarely happens on one of these little Briggs engines. They're renowned for being really solid. So we move this out of the way, tidy it up a little bit and clean it, and we're going to service this part up now, which is the carburetor here and the petrol tank. So the first thing we need to do with this before we start taking this apart is get all this dirt and crud off here. And you might have seen videos on these before, but there's actually a couple of little o-rings here in the back of these cabs. And you want to take these out so you don't lose them. There's a white one there, and then there's a black one. I'm going to take those out, put them on my bench, and then we're going to clean all this off. If you haven't got a, an airline or a compressor, just get yourself a bit of stale fuel and a brush and just brush it all off. Make sure it's clean so when we take this apart, none of this dirt drops inside. So I'm going to spend a couple of minutes just off camera, just cleaning this up and we'll come back and take this apart. So just clean that for two minutes, it's like a blue peter in it, one I made earlier. But look how clean you can get that. And um, just get an old paintbrush as I've said, just clean it off, make sure it's clean put that on the bench and what we're going to do next is we're going to take these five screws out of here and remove this carburetor off this is the tank this is the carburetor on it for anyone who's new to this so five screws in here cross-headed screwdriver 
sure you can find one of those somewhere. So I've done hundreds of these and um, it solves sort of 90% of all running issues on these little Briggs and Stratton engines if you change the little diaphragm and gasket in here and it's great that they've not touched the springs because normally it's the springs that are either tampered with or missing completely so we've got the whole thing here, we've got the carb, the tank, all the springs so there's no reason when we get this back together it shouldn't run alright this may not even need changing in here but because I've stripped this down I might as well put a new diaphragm and gasket in here before we put this back together so take these five screws out of here like this and all the time I'm doing this now I'm working on a nice oops stop the screwdriver I'm working on a nice clean carburetor and I'm not actually working around all the fuel because I've drained all that out so it's actually quite a clean process so take that out of there just need to undo that one a little bit I think like that there's actually a little gasket on there and make sure that goes back on not super critical but you want it on and then we can remove this carb here from the tank and I keep saying 90% but 90% of the problem with these lawnmowers is with this diaphragm and gasket when it wrinkles up like this one has this gasket all wrinkles up under here there's a spring that pumps the fuel through and if that doesn't actually sit on here nicely without this bubbled up you can see just how bubbled up that is can't you then it doesn't pump the fuel through properly so there's two parts to this there's a diaphragm and a gasket the diaphragm is the thinner part which comes off first here and this actually sits on the tank and the other side is the gasket so we're going to peel that off if I can get that on camera I'll try and show you kind of how bubbled up that is you can see how it's all wrinkled around here so we'll take that off and we'll, uh, we'll discard that that can go in the bin and when you're doing all this stuff please dispose of all the, uh, the fuel and the oil properly you can actually take it to your local tip I say that on loads of videos but you should always get rid of it properly now this little spring this is, uh, this is key, don't lose this little spring I always take it off and put it somewhere safe so I can't lose it these little filters here come off sometimes they need a little bit of a twist and you might need a little bit of a, a cloth or something to get it off but I'm going to get that off and we'll take that off, that's off and out of the way and then this tube which not a lot of people will show you on YouTube actually pulls out it takes a little bit of doing and then we can get in and clean all these parts you need some carburetor spray for this if you haven't got any of that you can just get some uh, a can of compressed air and just blow through here and make sure everything's clean and tidy but the most important part of all this is the diaphragm and gasket link in the description you've guessed it so I'm going to leave this main jet in here I don't normally take these out on these little Briggs carbs I'm going to blow all this out with the airline I've got some carb spray up here again all these things I will link to everything I think you might need to get started doing this there'll be a huge list in the description I like this STP carb spray um, seems to do a good job spray the whole thing up with that blow it out with the airline then I'll show you how to put on the diaphragm and gasket set and one thing on these that's really important to clean is these little filter tips here these screens make sure you get some carb spray and then blow through it and if you look down this end you should be able to see a tiny little hole or daylight through the other side and make sure that this part isn't blocked so when you've got all those parts clean I've just cleaned all these off I've blown them all out the nice clean and tidy we're going to get this part here push this back on here should click it takes a bit of persuasion let me just try that again like that took some doing didn't it but it's back on everything's nice and clean and tidy I'm not going to have any problems with that and I've even done in here particularly make sure all these little holes are nice and clean you know, everything really clean the next part is to make sure this carb's clean all the way around here clean any old fuel out of here and I used to get a cotton bud and put it in here and clean all these little chambers out so if you haven't got any specialist tools just give it a wipe round make sure you don't blow this back in your face any petrol using an airline and get a cotton bud if you haven't got anything else put it in there and clean out these little parts so the next thing you need is a diaphragm and gasket set and I said diaphragm and gasket then but diaphragm and gasket set um, these are some old ones that I've had before I only really normally use original ones now but we'll give this one a go some of them on eBay nowadays are so thin 
so cheap it's really really not worth bothering with so what you get here is you get two parts you get a gasket which is the thicker part which is this bit and you get the floppy one the thinner part which is the diaphragm and then what you do is you lie these parts on here and I always get these the wrong way on no matter how many times I've done it <laughs> and you line them up you can see how, the, how all the little holes and everything line up correctly you should be able to push this across the thinner part goes on first and then this thicker part here goes on top like this so the idea behind this is you line everything up and then drop your carburetor back in and of course you must remember to pop this spring back on which is something I nearly always forget to do so I'll pop this spring back on here and put my little silver thing back on there that I took off and then you want to put this actual tube here down the hole like this don't worry about anything moving about just pop it down this hole here and then looking down from the top the idea is you get all the three parts the carburetor the diaphragm the gasket looking down from the top making sure that that spring's gone down nice and flat and it feels sometimes I sort of bend down here look like this and I'll actually have a look at the spring and make sure it's sat nice and even and got twisted looking down from the top now you want to make sure you've got a really even hole down all these parts and when you're happy that everything's nice and even what I do is I just drop a screw back in one of the holes and just start to tighten it up a little bit and I don't tighten it up fully and then I work across and just loosely put these in these are Halford's advanced um, screwdrivers by the way with uh, magnetic tips so that shouldn't have just fallen off but you see how it holds the things on it kind of makes the job a little bit easier so pop that in there someone's revving the car up outside not sure what's going on there anyway that goes through there and we'll work our our way around all these parts and tighten all this up there's someone next door having the car fixed there's a man sat in a, a, a car fixing it so all I'm going to do I'll do in time lapse so you've not got to listen to that is just pop these other few screws back in So once you've got these in, I just generally work my way diagonally and tighten these up, make sure they're nice and tight these, work your way across like that. And that's it, believe it or not, that's pretty much it. If you can learn that simple repair, putting that diaphragm and gasket in there, you can make yourself some uh, extra uh, pocket money in the summer, which we all like, don't we? We all like a bit of extra uh, holiday money or beer money or whatever it is that you might want to get. So that's it diaphragm and gasket done, everything nice and cleaned off I'm going to show you how to put it back on the mower and do the rest of the things that we need to do um, one other thing I want to mention to you as well is that you don't lose these parts if you can't find these parts they might still be on the lawnmower so the black part sits in here and it actually goes against this back wall here you push that in first and it should fit nice and snugly against that back wall there and then the white one like a retaining one really and that just holds everything in and that's the whole carbon tank serviced one other thing to check as well is that the primer bulb don't have any splits or cracks or anything in it and when you've got some fuel in these petrol tanks one way to test this without the air filtering if you push the primer bulb you'll see some fuel jump across you must see that otherwise obviously the lawnmower won't start so obviously no fuel jumping across because this is drained out but that is the whole carb serviced so things are beginning to take shape really so you can see this linkage here this little hook here on the bottom this is the key to getting the carb and tank back on and the reason another reason anyway that I take all the fuel out of this is so you can tip it and you're not getting fuel everywhere all you have to do with this is get that hook in the widest part of this black triangle piece here see this black triangle piece this part nearest has a wider hole the bigger one of the two if you get the hook and put that in the hole like that this whole thing hooks back together again that's it and the next part of the process is this here this tube is an inlet manifold and I showed you the black and white washers on the back of the car well they push onto this tube like that and you press the whole thing on into position we'll get the bolt and put it back through 
make sure all these springs move about and then that's it it's as simple as that I've got to make sure that this part here I'm not really showing you much about yet as well this little rubber boot here just has to go on these two parts it goes on there and on there and that's the whole car back on so we'll take this bolt we took off earlier put your little space a piece back on this all goes back through here you can start to hand tighten that and there should also be one of the front here so I'm going to get another 10 mil bolt there's one that goes here and you want to put this one in because this one at the front here keeps the tank level so you've got a nice level tank so I'm going to hand tighten that one I'm going to find myself a bolt to, bolt to go in here which is a, usually a 10 mil and we'll put that one in as well that's the whole carbon tank back on the mower and that's um, the main part of the fixes that you're going to need to learn to do these repairs so we'll get that and we'll give it a little bit of tighten up like that make sure this spacer moves and get myself another little bolt at the front and tighten it up I've, I've been doing this long enough so I've got plenty of these uh, little spares so and I get this here let's just twist this round here I get a 10 mil in here and we'll get that in there we'll tighten it up make sure everything's pressed on and again all the time I'm doing this make sure all these springs in this air vein bounce around like they should so tighten that side one up here I'll give this one at the front a tighten as well and already you're probably beginning to notice that everything looks already a lot better this carb and this tank everything's nice and clean all the springs and everything on the engine has been cleaned off as well outside so things are beginning to take shape I've taken my camera off my tripod to show you all this and I just want to show you still a little bit of dirt in there isn't there on the spring but how clean and tidy it all is now just using the airline I've got outside or you can see a stiff brush you can see how all this bounces about and this is super important make sure this little black triangle part actually moves left and right like that I always think that looks like Batfink anyone ever remember the Batfink cartoon in the 80s in the UK anyway but make sure that it doesn't it hasn't actually gone over the top or it sits at one side make sure it moves left and right just like Batfink <laughs> so another quick thing to check make sure inside here you've actually got some sort of metal that looks like it's going to clamp around the spark plug I had one of these snap recently so go real careful with that um, the next thing I'm going to show you how to do that you probably won't ever need to do unless somebody's taken the ignition coil off is set this ignition coil to this flywheel there needs to be a gap here down this little part here there needs to be a gap and what happens is when the engine turns it's got magnets on you get a spark it sends it through the ignition coil down the way into the plug and the mower will run and we're going to have a look quickly at this um, kill switch wire and this is something that's a safety mechanism you'll need this to be working for the lawnmower not only to start but to stop as well these flywheels just put a screwdriver in the back of here by the way so I can turn the flywheel so I've not got the cable connected but these flywheels here have got little magnets on here and what you need to do is set the gap I'm going to show you how to do that but find a position here on the flywheel where the magnets aren't and put that to the front and that way when you undo this to set it, don't keep grabbing hold of it so you probably won't need to do this, there's not many people have taken these off and messed about with them but just so you do know like a quick way of doing it I'm going to undo this and I'm going to quickly show you how to set this up you probably noticed there I'll, I'll slacken this off there's a big slack gap there obviously this all needs setting, what you can do with this is if you slacken this off enough you can get a piece of card in here and this is why I said to not do it near the magnets. If you get a piece of card, push it in, in here, like of a tissue box lid or back of a spark plug packet. If you do that and push it, just hold it in position and actually spin this flywheel, what you'll find is it grabs the magnet, grabs the actual coil. What's that got it? like that, that took some doing, so it grabbed it and once it's grabbed it you've got an even gap between the card then it's quite simple really, all you need to do is lock this back up like that, turn it the other side and then you've got an even gap between the ignition coil and the flywheel make sure, again, make sure this air vein moves and then spin it round and just pull the card out and then you've got an even gap here, that's all you need to do that's how you set the ignition coil up there's a wire that runs right round here and it runs to this kill switch so I'm going to actually show you how to clean off and how to check now 
and because I've not got the cable connected on the back of the here on the back of uh, here <laughs> I um, I'll show you in a little bit more detail later on but basically this part here opens and closes and it disconnects when it disconnects it allows this wire to function sends a spark to the coil we've just set and to the plug so what happens and I'll show you again later when I put the cable back on this part swings out of the way so you want to make sure all this is clean and tidy and you've got the wire which actually connects on the you can actually take this out by bending this tab and pulling the wire out you see how it moves about make sure for now while you've got it off that it's all clean and tidy and I'll show you in a little bit more detail when we get this back together exactly why that's so important and while we're here I guess it would make sense to put another plug in it I use these NGK B2 LM spark plugs so we'll pop one of those in and then I won't connect this I always leave this to the last so we'll pop that in there normally just put this in by hand like that nice new spark plug in there, a couple of pounds I think they are save loads of problems by putting a decent NGK plug in don't buy them from B&Q in the UK they sell these ones with green text on them believe me they don't work and I think it's because they want you to buy a new lawnmower from them so new plug in carb service petrol tanks nice and clean I think you'll agree when we're looking at the top of this blown all the dirt and dust off it springs linkages all moving correctly no mess inside it anymore we've got the ignition coil cap set here so we'll pull this screwdriver out of here and then we can get this recoil put back on which I've not even started on showing you yet I'm going to change the pull cord as well and we'll get this back on the mower we're going to need to take a look at this air filter as well I don't generally replace these you can see that if you get some old fuel and just dip it in it and squeeze it out a bit you can actually get these pretty clean again and just put a really fine coat of oil back on when you put them back through squeeze it all together and it just stops all the dust blowing through it and stuff so that's not actually too bad if you look at that side and if you see one of these that's completely black it's because someone's tipped them all completely over full of oil so give that a good clean off that's all you need to do when you've got that cleaned off just pop that back in there that whole thing's done as well really quite a, a simple quick job right now I was just going to take this off here this shouldn't be attached to here someone's bolted this right through here and this whole thing's a mess and in the probably 10 years I've been doing this this is the first starter recoil I've seen smashed so I think I might have another one of these which seems a bit lucky but I wouldn't worry about this too much because I've done probably nearly a thousand of these I've never ever seen one smashed and it shouldn't be bolted through there like that so I've got a few bits of well things in boxes up here and I'm going to have a quick look through and I'm pretty sure I, don't, I used to keep quite a few of these I've definitely got one there but whether it's the same size or not I don't know but let's have a look I have a few boxes of spare loads but oh, look at that one that might do it when I uh, break these down for spares I keep certain parts so I know that they're not all exactly the same shape and size but this looks pretty good look at those cutouts there at the back ah, so this has been sat in here a while and you don't actually see this when you've got this plastic cover on so I got this last lawnmower I got for a fiver just for spares and hopefully this will work let me just put this on a tripod let's give this a quick go Look at that. Right, so we've done most of the engine. If you've seen any of my videos before, you're going to know that painting isn't my strength. I'm not going to be um, stripping this down to bare metal and using a grinder and trying to make this look like brand new. My idea with these is sell it and make as much profit as you can and turn it around quickly. But what I am going to do is not sell it like this. This is uh, filthy. So what I'm going to do in a minute is I'm going to go in the kitchen. I'm going to get my wife's pan scrubber off the sink in a bucket which she'll be really pleased about I'm going to go around it all and clean it off with a pan scrubber I'm going to lightly just sand this down it'll only take me five minutes and then I've got this which is quite a good match for these decks this is a hammerite metal paint if you can still see under the mess it's hammered black I'm just going to brush it on I'm not going to take the wheels off I'm going to take all this deflector off I might cover over these stickers just so it looks a little bit new and put it back and I'm just going to quickly go around it with a paintbrush um, and just kind of store this image now because in about five minutes time I think you'll agree that um, it makes quite a big difference to these mowers so I'm going to clean this off lightly sand it down quickly paint this up and just add to the potential profit of this mower
Right, as you probably see, even though I've cleaned it, you can see now all this rust. This is why I want to paint this up. And I've said before, and I get loads of comments in the videos saying I've no idea what I'm doing. I'm going to rub this down with some sandpaper. I don't know if it's too thick, too thin, not bothered. It gets the job done. I'm just going to rub this down with some sandpaper. Get a really old paintbrush out and just paint over it. And that's it. Don't worry about it. Just clean it, sand it, and just basically just get on with it. Then what you can do, I don't always do this to be honest, is you can just cover over any stickers you don't want to paint over, get a bit of uh, light masking tape, slice along the edge, and you can just peel this off. That way, when you do that, you can just paint around any stickers. I don't do them all, but there's a couple sometimes, if they look quite new, I'll go over again. You don't have to do all this. Normally, I wouldn't paint them over. I'd, I'd normally buy one that doesn't really need painting, but I think on this occasion it'll benefit it. And again, if you think I'm terrible, just leave me a comment, I don't mind. Um, I've got a part of my old boiler here to stir this paint up with so I can put this straight in the, uh, in the bin. It's going to mix that around a bit. It's only kind of uh, uses a little bit of paint to do this as well. I've had this years. So, Hammerite metal to rust paint, metal paint. This is hammered black. It's got like um, almost like a metallic finish to it, so it's really easy to paint on. It's, it's kind of really forgiving. So, I put um, Sutty's magic wand somewhere safe. And we'll crack on. Nice day for this as well. It's a uh, nice sunny day today. Not much wind about or anything like that. It's nice to be in the garden. So see my uh, painting skills in all the glory. And I'm just going to cover over all this old rust. You can see there, even from a sort of standing start, you can see what sort of finish you're going to get. And as long as you're careful not to get it all over the wheels and everything. You're kind of on a winner and you can probably tell there kind of what that looks like already Right, so it's taking shape. You can see I'm uh, I'm no Bob Ross, that's for sure. But it's covering over all the rust and it's protecting the deck, and that's all I really needed to do. To be honest with you. Right, as I said, um, this paint, this hammerite stuff, really forgiving. I'm sure you'll tell here for you know, it's it's far better than trying to sell something that's like rusty and needs painting up. So, looking at that, to me, looks a lot better. Like, it's going to sell for a lot more money than it would have done in its um, previous condition. While I've got a little bit of paint, I'll, I'll probably just brush the underside of this deck as well. Just put a little bit of protection around these areas, because these are where they normally rot through on the edges of here when all the grass is built up. So, I'll do a bit of the underside. I'm not going to film any of that. And I'm going to leave this baking in the sun. It's um, going to look fine when it's dried, and I'm going to be... Uh, happy enough with that, it's taken me no more than five minutes really and it really will add to the value when you come to sell this mower when you've got the engine back on and all this is nice and clean and tidy as well this will look fantastic and as soon as it's a nice day out here I'll just give this a quick rub down here I'll give a few of these little bits a little bit of a paint up just some of the worst bits not going to go too mad with that but I'm going to tidy it up just a little bit Really nice out here today. You know that feeling when you, you can feel summer's coming up. I think the clock's changing a few days' time. Um, you can hear people out next door and kids starting to play in the garden and things. It's just, I love it, mate. I absolutely love this time of year, especially for these mowers. But we're just going to leave that. Try not to film in my shadow. You can probably see here it's drying. And you get the point. And I haven't gone mad with this engine here. I've just basically lightly touched up anything that was looking silver. Don't paint over all stickers and go mad with it all. Just tidy it up. You can see around here I've just given it a little light coat of this and this will dry in no time. One thing I'm going to do next, which looks kind of a mess, is I'm just going to take this exhaust guard off. Take the exhaust off while it's cold. I'm just going to get some wire wool and I'm going to brush all this. Uh, brush all this. I'm going to actually uh, just clean up all this rust with this actual wire wool and try and clean this up a little bit. Just to tidy it up. So when it all sits back 
on this nice looking deck we haven't got this rusty exhaust here so if you do this make sure of course that the uh, engines cool down and the exhaust's not hot so all you, all you need to do with this is take this guard off these snap really 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 easy so when you put this back on be very careful it should sit on that pin there if you ever see that there that's not broken it's supposed to be like that the uh, bolt goes through here and it goes through a pin that comes off this should be loose because this normally attaches to the engine and then you've got a couple of bolts here to take out which I'm going to do now I wasn't really in the, intending on the painting any of the deck so if I had been I would have um, taken off this exhaust first so what have I got in here I've got an 8mm here let's just take this off here it's such a simple thing to do really so unbolt this You've got to be real careful with these. As I said earlier a few minutes ago, it's these when you tighten them back up, the amount of ones of these are snapped. Just make sure it's in. Um, I hate these looking all sort of rusty and a mess really. So let's get that off there. I've even been careful not to take it off. It's so rusty. Don't want it to snap. So we've got that off. And then with these, there's a couple of little metal tabs. You can probably just see here, there's a couple of little tabs here, you need to bend these out of the way, so I normally get an old screwdriver like this, you can just normally get in here, bend these out of the way, if you can't just get a hammer, I'm going to do now, just tap them out of the way, we'll take these bolts out, right so just pop these out of the way a little bit like this, probably use a better tool really but it's enough, it only takes a little bit to move them, that's all. It's only soft. And that'll do. Right, so we've got them unbolted. I actually went back in and got this impact rather than using a spanner. So I didn't want to spend forever doing it. So that's that, that comes off. You can see all this rust down here. I'll never be able to get rid of this completely. I could probably spray paint it, but it ain't going to last five minutes. While I'm in here, I'll clean all this up, paint a little bit up. Get some wire wool, which I'll show you in a second, and I'll just rub this over. So I've got some of this here. See this stuff? It's only cheap. What I do is I just go around everything. And I'm not going to do this, but because I've painted the deck, I'm waiting for it all to dry a little bit. I'm just going to spend a few minutes and just go around here. Just make it look a little bit kind of newer, really. It just puts a little bit of life back into it, I think. It's all a bit obsessive, isn't it? And um, not something I, I always do, but... I'm out here in the sunshine, I'm waiting for the paint to dry. Um, I have actually got another mower in the garage I want to get on with, but I'm kind of keen to get this video done as well. So I know this is uh, it's going to be a bit of an epic, this one. And I want to kind of cover as many things as I can for you if you want to start doing this, making yourself a little bit of uh, extra profit this summer. I think everybody could probably do with a little bit of that after the uh, year we've just had. So let's see if we can get these out of here. Not to worry, if not, I'll do that in a second. But you can see here, watch. We get this on here like this, look. See how it just starts to shine up and you get some of this rust off. So it's never going to be perfect, but it just makes a little bit of difference to the finish. See how that's starting to come up shiny? Right, so in a second I'm going to Put this engine back on here, it's paint I haven't actually really dried yet, but I want to get on with it, to be honest, so I'll just be careful, but don't forget, when I got this more, I haven't actually been able to see if this runs, I didn't even check the piston really went up and down and stuff, so, and I also don't know if the self-drive works, but when you put this back on here, make sure the belt goes back around the actual shaft at the bottom, and I'm going to check that the actual belt is hooked on to the drive underneath first before I do that, but I don't even know if the drive works, I don't know if the drive works, I don't know if the engine works, so definitely stick around and uh, we'll find out shortly I guess but normally I would test these things first but I couldn't start the mower, the engine was loose so obviously I couldn't um, test this self drive either but hopefully it'll be alright, these are pretty reliable these um, over the years have been good mowers these so I'm going to drop this back on now I'll see uh, just what it looks like, i put this exhaust guard back on as you can see so let's drop that back on there now and let's have a look at what this looks like so the next job, now I've got this kind of sat back on here, is to bolt this engine back on. So to do this, I think I'm going to have to take off this actual carbon tank again. But as I've shown before, two bolts to do it. So I'm going to have to find some bolts that go through here. I think one is going to go under here. I think there's three on this. One that sits underneath there. I'm not sure if you can see. And the other one at the other side here. So 
I have to get this sorted and make sure that this is sat securely on this. So I'm just going to basically find some bolts, put them through, tighten it up and that'll be the, uh, the whole engine back on. But you can see just with spending 10 minutes tidying this up, you know when I want to take some photographs of this in a second, when I finish doing all this and putting this back together, this is going to look much better than it did when we got this. Quite a few little bits there but if you ever start doing this, you start with nothing. Don't forget everybody who's starting repairing things like this, Everybody starts with nothing. These are all the things I've just saved from those I've not been able to save and collected the parts off. So don't forget, if you're thinking of starting this, everybody starts with, with nothing really. No tools, no bits. But as you get mowers that you can't fix, unfortunately, from time to time, you can strip them down for the bits and even sell them on occasion for spares. But keep all these little bolts. I found these parts here. I'm going to just bolt these back through. It'll only take me a few minutes. And then we'll take a look at putting this back together, get some oil in this, some fuel in it, and let's try and start this up. Right, as you can see, I've got this engine bolted back on here. This is still kind of partly drying, but the next thing I'm going to do is actually sharpen the blade. I don't film this, so I don't want anyone copying maybe what I do and kind of injuring themselves, but I'll show you the way I do it. It's up to you how you do it. What I do is I have a little blade balancing tool here, and I basically follow the natural angle of the blade. You can see how there's a like an angle of the blade here, I run it along a couple of times and take all the big chunks out follow the natural angle along on the grinder and then to check this is balanced I've got this little tool so it wiggles around underneath you want to make sure that it's not like this you want to make sure that you take enough of each end off so that this balances before you put this back on the mower and this will stop loads of vibration so I'm going to clean this off with a wire brush I'm going to run it along my bench grinder wearing my safety glasses which I've got here um, make sure this is nice and clean and tidy and then I'm going to put this back on we're finished with the underside of the mower then I'm going to attach the drive belt and the guard and get the blade back on and then I'm finished with the underside I can put the fuel back in, the actual oil back in we can put the recoil cover on again and we can try this mower so you can see with this balancing tool here I'm just kind of sharpening this up now you sit this on the top here and you can see you kind of don't want it touching the bench at either end so I've got a little bit more work to do take a little bit more off this end to level it up but that's the general idea so when it's on the mower it's nice and balanced and this is uh, more critical the bigger the side of blade you've got so if you've got a, a mower with a really wide blade this is even more critical so I've got a little bit more work to do on that but it's getting pretty close I right, probably shouldn't be but um, I'm eating a donut it's really nice actually anyway I'm going to get this back on here there's a certain order you need to do this in because if you put the blade adapter and the blade on you can't get this belt guard on here so what I'm just checking is that this belt runs around this wheel at the back whatever you want to call that goes over this shaft we've already checked this keyway so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to push the blade adapter on I'm going to show you how to get the belt back on then we're going to put the belt guard back on and then eventually we'll put the blade back on that's the correct order to do this in all right so these blade adapters you look down this gap hopefully you can just see at the bottom of this cut out section here that lines up with this keyway here so I'm going to put that on there and line this up I'm not going to worry too much about the belt at the minute and what I like to do is I kind of like to get it half on and I'll put the camera on a tripod in a minute and I basically get the belt half on and turn manually turn this round when it turns it actually drags the belt back into position which should fit in this part here so to make this a bit easier what you need to do as well I should have shown this really before is we're going to reconnect up this cable so I'm going to put this back through here like this see this goes underneath here just pushes up underneath like that I'll get that in there like that look and then what I've got to do is pull this back through here let's just go around here put my camera on a tripod or anything pull that back around here let that go through there and then using that we can now use this cable and um, by taking the brake off I can spin the actual crankshaft on the side and get this belt back on a bit easier so the next thing I'm going to do while I've got the plug out and obviously I'm not going to start this is I'm going to just cable tie this handle and that'll keep this brake off which means that this part here can spin freely I actually have one of these mini clamps here that does the job saves wasting a perfectly good cable tie as well so that goes there this lines up again as I've just shown you like this I'll get that lined up on there like that push this on and I'm going to put the camera on the tripod I'm going to hook this round here 
and you can see how we can turn this now I want to make sure all the time I'm doing this this fits in this little gap here and it stays on this little cog at the back I was going to just grab my tripod but I don't need to if you get to this point here you can see because we've got this brake release I can just turn you can see I've got this on here I've got this round actual belt runner at the back I can just push this back up I'll probably give that a little bit of a tap up as well. So I've got that on, I can put this actual plastic cover on next and eventually we can put the blade on. You must do it in this order, otherwise you won't get it back together. I've grabbed this belt guard, I should still just about be able to get that on there. This bolt is intentionally, I've left that intentionally longer because it needs to actually go there. I'll make sure that that's not catching the blade by the way when I put this back together. So make sure this gets in here. Make sure you go around the right side of the belt. I can tell there that I'm just catching the belt, so I'm going to tear that off again. See how that hooks around the back there. Put that there, put that there. Get this all in position, we'll get some new screws in there. Put the bolt back through here, and you can see, although this is kind of long, it's obviously uh, set back a long way from the blade, so that's going to be fine. So I'll bolt that back on. Put two new screws in here as well, so if anybody wants to in the future, they can get this off and clean the belt guard off without all the hassle that I had. I'll grab that, just get this impact here. Hopefully that's right. Got a spanner on there, just ran out of length on that actual uh, socket, but you get the idea, that goes on there. Couple of new screws in here, and that's everything on apart from the blade. Finally, we're going to get to this blade, you can see I've sharpened that up. You want this this way up when it's facing you, cut in, it wants to go this way around, so I'll get this here. Put this through here, look, you see these pins? They must line up with these holes, so Again, make sure your spark plug is removed. I never put the plug back in and connect it up before I finish this. So I'm going to get this here. I'm going to get my uh, impact here on my other hand. Just start this up a little bit. I'm trying to do it with one hand really. I should just put the camera on a tripod. But if I can just do it now, I will. See how it drops on the pin there. That must sit there like that, that's exactly how you want it. And that's us done with the underside of the mower, belt guard done. Everything's back as it should be, don't need to go under there again. That's the underside of this mower done. I wasn't going to do this bit but as it's a nice day and the uh, sun's out I'm going to show you how to actually replace this pull cord on here as well. It's not really a, a big job to be honest with you so I'll do it and it does look a little bit tired so if you've got one of these and it basically looks all right then I'd suggest you leave it alone but leave this end on, pull this out of here I'm going to pull this out kind of as far as I really need to here. I'm going to grab a clamp like this I've seen people put um, screwdrivers wedge things in position here doing this as well but I don't recommend doing that because it can always come out and hit you in the face can't it so get yourself a cheap plastic clamp and put that in there like that tighten that up just to hold it in position and I'm going to grab the other end of this here with these long nose pliers I've just bought myself some new ones of these because these are rubbish grab that out there I'm going to cut this off and because this rope actually hasn't snapped I'm going to measure my new rope against this one add a little bit extra on the ends to tie the knots so I've got that there got that out I'm going to reuse this handle here Let's grab this here take that out of there I'm going to lie this rope on the floor I'm going to measure it against some new pull cord rope I buy this I think it's about I don't know, last time I bought it, it was about a tenner 25 meters I think those are 100 meters on there which is really cheap, it's almost the same price as buying one actual pull cord with a handle on the end so I'll just lie it along here, make it a little bit longer, it don't have to be super accurate I'm just going to cut this off here next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to burn the ends which makes it easy to actually uh, pull back through so if I can stop the wind blowing on this right, wind's picking up and I'm no smoker so I'm not an expert at that but let's just do it in the garage all I really want to do is burn the end of it like this make it into like a nice little tip like that can point it if you can, do the same thing at the other end like this
it just makes it so much easier to poke back through these little holes. So this bit's a little bit fiddly, you've got to poke this actual pull cord rope back through here. And you see, just in here, how it points out of here. What you've got to do is you've got to kind of mess about and line up this clamp a little bit just to get it to um, everything to line up and you're working against the spring tension so it can be quite quite awkward to do so I'm just going to move that around there a bit have a look like that and I'm going to retighten this clamp it is awkward this the first few times you've done it once you've done it a few times it's uh, it's pretty straightforward really get your best part or whichever end it's basically come off the best most pointed get that sometimes it helps if you tilt this back on itself so if it's got a quite kink in it you can go back that way a little bit you can see there oh, I've got that back through there that looked quite simple but the first time you kind of do that you might find it's uh, it takes a while it's actually uh, this is one of the best modes to do it on so I'm gonna do that put a, a knot in this I'm gonna get some pliers probably get some bigger ones in a minute pull this tight here like this make sure it's tight and then I'm going to pull this back through here make sure that this is sat nice and tidy in there it's not going to catch on anything don't release the clamp keep hold of the clamp then you want to find the end that you took off your other part which is here poke this through here grab that tighten this up like this, put a knot in the end again, pull on that, tighten it, and get that back through in there like that. And now you can what I do is I kind of grab hold of the tension with my hand and take the clamp off. What you the idea behind this is you slowly let the spring tension take up the rope. I say I've done this um, quite a few times, so it can be a bit fiddly. If the pull cord rope's generally alright, and you're just starting doing this, I would um just leaving it alone what I do then is I get a fist full of this like that and then I just let it gradually go back in on itself like this and it might be a little bit long but if it's a bit long I'm not too bothered about that we can always cut a little bit off here when we get it back on the mower and make this a little bit shorter and sometimes you'll find if you sort of stretch the spring a little bit sometimes go back in it kind of goes back in a bit further that looks a bit long but at least I'm not wasting a full length of rope I'd rather it be sort of six inches too long and be able to cut it off later when we get this back on the mower so that's how you do it so let's get this recall back on here and there's actually a little hole in here and I need this little hole to actually put the red plastic cover back on I'm gonna put a screw through there so I'm gonna put this back on here make sure when you do this that you're not chopping any of this kill switch wire here so I'm going to go on the other side because I'm more used to doing it from the other side make sure this spark plug lead goes through the centre here there's a little cut out I'll put that on there and make sure that goes down there I'll come back around this side and what I do is I make sure everything's lined up first before I put any of these bolts in and then what we'll do is we'll put the three bolts back in and just hand tighten them so I want to make sure that everything's exactly where I want it you see how that wants to be there I want that on the inside, like that, and that on the outside. And now, I'm going to get the three bolts and put these back in. Quickly show you what I mean. There's a part in there that goes inside and hooks up. The exhaust goes on the outside. At this side, you want this part here. I've not quite got that in right. This spacer wants to go up here like that. That all wants to be nice and level. And the front, you want to make sure that this spark plug lead goes in this little notch. Otherwise, you could cut this lead. What I like to do is get these three in, that actually looks a bit high, I'm going to redo that one. But get these in even, all three of them just started like that. And um, make sure that you just sort of hand start these and then I go around and tighten them up. Don't do any of them until you've got all three of them in, otherwise everything doesn't tend to line up. I'm going to go around, I'm just going to tighten these up. This has actually got adjustable speed on, so I can just go steady with that. Normally I would just do it by hand, but because I'm in a bit of a rush, I'm trying to get this back together. Like that, and that's all back together one thing I want to point out as well is that this whole lever by the way somebody have probably commented on this if you've been watching the whole video and if you're off well done it's going to be a long one this was actually right round here the wrong side this actually wants to go here most people bend this down the other thing I want to show you now now I've got this actual cable here connected back up 
I said I'd mention this earlier, is the kill switch. You can see how this swings away here when you're actually moving this lever. This kill switch moves out of the way and it must be clean. This is why it must be clean. It must disconnect and then the tab at the top, I'll kind of point out to you now, this tab here has like a semicircle on the bottom of it. It's designed, it must connect when you actually let go of this handle like this. When you let go of it, this is designed to swing round and connect and when it connects it stops the spark. So if you've got a lawnmower with no sign of life, make sure that this is free and the kill switch wire is connected up correctly. So we're almost there, I promise. Apologies if there's a bit of uh, wind noise. I normally have like a wind thing on the end of my camera, but it's broken. So anyway, we'll manage, won't we? Tighten this air filter box back on. And to be honest with you, with this new recoil cover on here, I could kind of sell that like that. That looks good enough. Got a Briggs engine on. I'm not really sure about whether to fit the, the red cover back on or not, but I probably will. I'll probably tidy these uh, handles up. I might spray paint these handles up and just tidy all this up a little bit. But we're getting to the point. I'm going to put some oil on this in a second. Put some fuel in this, connect this plug up, and let's give this a go. And the question I always ask myself with these covers is, does it date the mower? So push that through there, pop that back on. And actually it looks more complete because of this red grass, uh, grass box deflector at the back. I'm going to clean that up, give that a bit of a clean up, probably tidy this sticker up a second as well, make sure that's a bit neater. And then I'm going to put that back on, we're going to put a screw down here, and I said earlier there was a little screw hole in this cover, I'm actually going to put another screw down there, and that'll screw into this cover. Make sure you don't lose a, uh, use a screw that's too long, or it can stop that actual air vein opening and closing. One thing I always get which I, I really like is people comment on the videos which are fun. I, I, lo I love people commenting on the videos, I really do my best to get back to people on comments and there'll always be somebody who'll find something. And if you've noticed this one and you've left me a comment before I've done it then fantastic, this is uh, it's a great spot. I've not put this back on yet, I want to put this back on before I put that back on because this, I'm going to find some bolts for this, I want any in it. This um, engine oil dipstick here, there's a couple of little holes in these recoils, even though this is a different recoil that I couldn't use the original, it obviously has got the holes on, so I'm going to put that in there and put a, lot, a couple of little bolts through there and the idea is that every time you take this engine oil dipstick out that this whole tube doesn't come out and I've got to do that before I put that cover back on. I've got them in there like that, just uh, tighten these up. You must do this, it's really annoying if you're trying to check the oil on the mower and the whole thing comes out, especially with that red trim on the top because you can't get to anything. That's in. That's solid in there, that's going to go in there like that, and now I can go around here, put this on the top of here, this goes through here, look, and I can get to this and unscrew it, can you see what I mean? This whole part below it here stays where it should stay, I'm going to get a screw through here and a screw down here, tighten this up, and then it's finally time, as I've promised, to try this mower, and let's just hope that the engine works and the self-drive works. Right, the time's finally come, we're going to try this mower. If anybody uh, is a regular watcher of my videos and would like to leave a comment for somebody who's never watched one of these videos before, and just let them know that this isn't always as hard work as this, and this is actually one of the worst ones I've done in a long while. Um, please feel free to do that. I'm going to put some SAE 30 oil in here. I'm going to put just under 400 ml in there. These take about half a litre of oil to fill up so I'm going to get that there I'm going to go grab my funnel I can easily take this dipstick tube out because I've done everything right I'm going to grab my funnel we'll tip this in and we'll measure this oil and we can always top this up of course let's pop that in there I'll we'll just slowly fill this hopefully I've got this drain plug back in at the bottom properly so it's not all pouring out the bottom we'll get that in there we'll leave that a couple of minutes to settle down and then we'll check the oil, which is pretty straightforward. Hopefully you can maybe see on this dipstick here, there's actually a little gauge on these. And there's a little grid at the bottom here. And it needs to be between this little grid here. Don't put too much in. So wait for that to settle a second. We'll get a cloth, clean off this dipstick. And then we'll check this oil level. Attach the spark plug. And basically, if you followed all this video, you'll know I've had pretty much everything off this. And let's uh, see if it starts. Right, it's getting windy. Let's just try this. I'm going to put this in and thread it in. It's 400 mil of oil in here, and I know that this was completely emptied out. And for years, I've been telling people that this actually takes 500 mil of oil. So let's find out. 
and you can probably, I don't know if you can see or not, it's hard for me to see on the video camera but it's um, just below half, put that in, thread this in to check, take this out. So yeah, there's wants a little bit more in there, 450 might do you, I'm just going to put a little bit more in there. Just drop a touch in there and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do this in kind of one video take because this has been in bits and I don't know how it's going to run and I like all my viewers all the time to see exactly what goes on um, oh, fuel, there's some fuel in it I'm going to try and start this up because I didn't put any fuel in it so I'll go and grab some fuel and if you're new to doing this again these just take standard unleaded fuel nothing else needed for this so let's pop that in there I always put like half a tank in as well if you're going to try this give it a good chance to um, pull this fuel through the carb I'm going to put a decent chunk in there making a bit of a mess up spilling it all over my new paint so take that off I really should get myself a decent petrol can to be honest oops I've done that loads of times as well look put that back on there one other tip if it's easy to get to take the air filter off here Press the primer bulb and you'll see, hopefully you'll see the fuel shoot across from the top. So, I'll get that there, I'll get that there. It's so annoying, it's windy, it's really, uh, it's kind of annoying. So I'll try and put you over here, look. I'm going to grab this more off this bench. And, uh, I'll try and put you sleep back on let me have a look let me just make sure you can see what I can see because it might not start I don't know I might have got something wrong in the carb I might have uh, I don't know I don't know what I might have done wrong so let's um, put you over here a little bit let's finally get to this moment of truth here let's try and uh, start this lawnmower up this has been epic really I've still got some things to do, I want to tidy the handles up a bit, tighten them up a bit and stuff and uh, I might just paint them up, cable tie all these things but let's try it and let's see what we get, don't be disappointed if you do it and don't start straight away so you've got to get some fuel pumped through the car and I also need to hook this here it wants to go up through here like that reaching down there all the time. Look how nice that pull cord looks. So, I feel the fuel is going through here. We get quite a good chunk through there. Don't forget, I've never had this running. Um, let's just lift this up a minute. I'll do that in a minute. Let's try it. We've got fuel, we've got oil. Hopefully we've got an engine that runs and hopefully this self-drive will work as well. Oh. Bear with me. Right, ready? Sign of life, I like that.
running too fast now, but I haven't tested the self drive, have I? Right, great, start some runs, it's running too fast. But there's no leaks from the carb and we can definitely slow this down fairly easily and I'll quickly show you how to do that now. Started up nice, so um, the smoke at the beginning, because it's been tipped and emptied out, that's totally normal. Sometimes you might have to run them over for sort of 10 minutes even just to get that to burn off. But yes, I've got a running working lawnmower and I've got a self drive that works, which means this will resell for a decent chunk of money. Let's just get that off there. Pull this out of here if I can. Oh, it's so annoying in this cover. Oh. Try and get that out of there. I'm going to show you quickly how to slow these down. I should have easy pull out of there now. Yeah, it does. These uh, governor springs in here. This here, see this tab? If you bend that back towards that way, it will slow it down. So I'm going to bend that back a little bit. Put this back on my tripod and make sure there's nothing underneath it before I restart it. I'll leave the air filter off for just a minute. We'll try it and I'll show you that it slows it down a little bit. But um, to say we've had so many things off this, this is uh, this is great. I think I only paid, did I pay £20 for this? So yeah, it's going to be uh, a good £80 profit in this. Let's try it again. Don't ever do this with a handle if you've got kids, by the way, or dogs running about and stuff. There's a reason for that. Don't ever sell it like that either. I'll put a cable tie on it. I'm only doing this while I'm messing about with the mother. It's eventually settling down. I'm going to come through it and fill this through the window. It's still revving up and down a little bit, spitting and popping. And if you saw the last video I did, what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to put two diaphragms on this and one gasket. But I did a mower like this a few weeks ago and it ran like that until I've let the oil settle and the petrol and restarted it. So if you get one like this, you might want to leave it a day or so and restart this mower. But it, is, uh, it isn't running 100% right just yet. I'm not completely convinced that the uh, diaphragm and gasket is sat nicely on the car, but it starts and runs and the drive works. And what I generally do while I'm in the garden now is while I'm just tidying up a bit and I'm out here on my own, I'll just leave that running for five minutes just to get this um, actual engine warmed up, the oil going through and everything working as it should. Still don't forget it might not have been run for a few years. Yeah, um, 8 out of 10. I'm not mega happy with that to be honest. There's a few other things I could do with this. Um, one of them is in a video that I, I did, the last video I think I did was put two diaphragms which are the thinner parts and one gasket on that. I might try that. And the other thing I didn't check was uh, there's actually a keyway at the top of the crankshaft that might have slight damage because the timing, um, although it doesn't kick back, it, it doesn't run 100% even, but it's pretty good to be honest with you. I don't think anyone's going to have any problems. I've run it for a good 10 minutes and it's not, um, it's definitely not stalling or anything, but I really like to uh, have a tinker about. So what I might do for the next few minutes, just give you a few tips and tricks of what you can do just to make these run a little bit better. First of all, I'm just going to have a cup of tea. Right, I'm going to quickly unbolt the cab, two bolts, drop the linkage down, take it off. I'm going to put it on this uh, bench up here. We're going to put another diaphragm on this and we're going to test it and see what it runs like. Sometimes you get a, a not very good seal, a poor seal between the cab and the tank. And what you can do is you can actually, um, I'm just going to go in the garage, it's windy. What you can do is you can actually um, try a different carbon tank set up. Like I've got another mower in to do here, but you can keep a, a separate carb and tank set up. Sometimes they have one in here that I know works well and quickly bolt it on. I ain't got one set up at the minute so I'm going to quickly strip this off, put another diaphragm on and try it. So what I've done is I've just unbolted this here, I've just unscrewed it. I've got the diaphragm and gasket there but I'm putting an extra 
diaphragm which if you remember is the thinner part I'm going to try and get a better seal between this carb and the tank sometimes it don't you don't get a really good seal so by putting this extra diaphragm on you can kind of help it run a little bit smoother so I'm going to try it something I suggested in a previous video and I've got a chance to try it now so I'm going to try it so I'm going to put this back on put it back on the mower and we'll um, see what we get Right, so I've tried a few things, tried a um, couple of diaphragms gasket, still doesn't run exactly as I want it to run. Now for anybody new to this, this is my, new to the channel I should say, this is my own mower which is identical. So I'm going to start this up and I'm going to show you how mine runs when it settles down. And the easiest way to find out the problem with the mower is to quickly swap the carbon tank off a mower that's running right onto this one. And then we'll know if it's a carb issue or if it's something else, it's like a process um, of elimination really so I'm going to start mine up and show you kind of how smoothly it runs first so I'll just put this back on the tripod and then I'm just going to quickly unbolt mine off my mower try it on this one obviously if the mower the new mower I've got over there still doesn't run right it's not a carb issue so I'm going to start my mower up and let you have a listen to it nice and even that is that's what I want off this other mower yeah there's a couple of other things I can try the um, I haven't checked the actual keyway at the top of the crankshaft either it could be that and um, I don't know if you noticed but uh, it's in the garage because of the wind again the um, actual flywheel as well had quite a bit of rust on and didn't clean up so I need that to be nice and clean as it spins around past the ignition coil but normally these are carb issues so quickly because this is a, a design I love working on, I'm going to quickly unbolt my carb off my mower, swap it to this one, find out if it's a carb problem. Right, this is my own carb tank set up that I know works well on the mower that doesn't run as I want it to run. So let's try it if it still revs up and down a bit. I know there's something else wrong with this mower other than the carb. doesn't run any better with that carb on it still revs up and down a little bit so that tells me I don't need to fiddle around with the carb I've obviously got that right so there's some other problem now when you get a mower like this it's not massively running really badly but I'm going to try and do a few things to the I get to a point where I can't do any more the only other thing I can do is clean off that flywheel and I can actually look at the actual keyway at the top of this crankshaft the only other thing after that is the valves could have worn and um, really I don't get into that, I've done it on a few videos but I'm not going to go that fast to take the valves out and everything like that I never do, that's just not worth your time trying to make money repairing these for profit really by doing all that sort of stuff so what I'm going to do is put the um, carb on that came with it, put mine back together, put that back in the garage strip this down again, take the flywheel off and clean it and take a look at this top actual crankshaft key at the top just to make sure because if there's a if there's a notch in it or a knock in it you'll find that the timing just slightly out and it won't run even so it's something that you might have to do on occasion so I might as well take a look at it so what we're going to need to do is remove this flywheel so I'm going to use the handle at the top to take the brake off as I showed you before I'm going to clamp that, I've taken the spark plug lead off then I'm going to unbolt this top nut here we're going to bump this flywheel off from underneath right I've got um, an impact tool here so Remove the spark plug, I've got the brake taken off using the handle so I'm going to quickly zip this off here. Should have probably done this before to be honest. I'll take that off, that's a nightmare to do without the right tool. Just try and hold the blade at the bottom and get that off there. I'm going to find my rubber mallet and I'm going to bump this flywheel off from underneath. What I need to check here is that this actual flywheel here has a little keyway in here and if it's not exactly square and it's not exactly lined up the magnets here that run past this ignition coil don't spark at the right time so you get kind of uneven running so I've taken that off I'm going to just give that a bit of a spray probably with WD-40 but I've got a bit of carb spray I just want to loosen it up a bit 
So I'm just going to get a, a rubber mallet, which you shouldn't really do, and bump it off from under. You should use a puller really. But um, in truth, I've never really seen anyone do that. So I bought this big rubber mallet. Um, I'm not going to be sure this, I'm not going to just edit it out. I'm just going to bump this from underneath. And I'm just going to get this off here. I'm not sure just how well you can see this, but I'm not entirely convinced. It only takes a little bit of a notch in this key. And obviously it magnifies the amount that these magnets um, are out of timing with the flywheel. Obviously this gets wider as, as it goes out from the centre. So you're getting a magnification, if you like, of the, out, the, the timing being out. So I'm not sure if there's just a little notch at the right hand side across there. If there's a little notch out of this, so when we get it off we'll have a proper look. Right, so I've got this flywheel off as you can see here, and the uh, keyway here looks to be perfect. So you can see there's no kind of, there's a little line across it there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put another one in. There's a couple of little scuffs across it, and it doesn't take much for the timing to be out. I don't think there's much wrong with that, but I've got another one, so I'm going to swap it while it's off. Um, but there's something else that I've noticed that could be causing our problems and that's actually this hole here in this inlet manifold so I'm not sure if you can see there there's a slit across there and that might be something that was there before it might be something that's happened because I've used a different actual um, starter recoil so I'm not sure if it digs in there so we're going to have to take that off and swap it or at least fix it up so we've not got an air leak because where these rubber washers push on from the back of the cab only come to about here and if we've got air sucking in here there's no wonder this doesn't run right so I think what we'll do with that is if I've got one is I'll we'll replace it and if not we'll fix it up so right we need to go into the back cave and I don't mean the garage I mean my back cave box because in my back cave box I have a few little bits of everything you might need that you know you'll definitely need you'll never be able to find sort of thing one of them boxes and in here I've got some of these look that's what I wanted, some springs, keyways, primer bulb things, just things that you don't want to have to buy. So all these things that I've either bought in the past or taken off mowers that I've stripped down. So Look at that one there, that's got like a line down it, I don't really like that one. I'm going to find another one. Um, but I don't think this is the problem with this particular mower. So the one on the right is the one I'm going to replace it with, I know this is a genuine Briggs one I think and it hasn't um, haven't been in a mower so I'm going to disregard that one, I don't think there's anything wrong with it I am going to replace that I'm going to have a look in my tubs in here, this garage here um, but some of these on the end of these inlet manifolds are a different shape this one looks like ET, some of them are round you ever notice that? It, what's that film? Um, short Circuit, Johnny Five looks a bit like that doesn't it? so I'll see if I've got one of those and if I have I'll swap it but I've got to be careful putting the actual recoil back on to make sure that I don't make the same mistake I've got a few boxes of bits up here and hopefully I'll have a part I've got one there actually it's just going to turn this camera off look hopefully this is ET and it's not something else let's get it out and have a look at that so yeah maybe uh, ET is going to save the day this one hasn't got a hole in it and it looks to be a similar shape better look there as I say, if you're doing these for the first time, you're not going to have all these parts, but do save a few, at least one of everything. So I'm going to take off um, the ignition coil, just unbolt that, I've shown you how to set that, take off this uh, inlet manifold on the, on the bench, I'll put it back on the bench, I'll show you how to do it. And then we'll swap it over, make sure there's a gasket on the bottom, which I should be able to get off there, put this one back. And I think because it's been sucking air as it's trying to run, um, sorry, tape. <laughs> As it's been sucking as it's been trying to run, it hasn't quite run as evenly as it should have been doing. Right, let's quickly whip off this ignition coil. You see, you're getting the whole tutorial. It's a good job I showed you how to set this earlier, isn't it? In case you've got to do all this. And if you're not put off repairing these for profit by now, then you're a stayer. And I love people who are stayers who can just dig in. This isn't that difficult to do. And you're learning absolutely everything here. You're getting the whole lot in this video. Um, Let's get that off there. Let's try and save ET. What I want to do is save ET's diaphragm, really. I don't think they did that in the film, did they? Uh, I don't even mean diaphragm, I mean gasket, don't I, of course. Um, let's get this gasket, because there's a gasket behind here, and I need the gasket to kind of be in one piece. No, this wire sits over the top of ET. <laughs> I'm going to stop calling this ET if my neighbours are listening. <laughs> I think I'm having some sort of breakdown. Right, let's get this off. This is an inlet manifold, by the way. 
you can see, oh it's blank there but the gasket is actually sat in there so let's swap that. Let's just quickly put that one on there like that. And just screws back in. And now we've got one without a hole in it so it's not going to suck air. And I think that that's the problem of this mower not running quite right so I'll get back in there like that. Oops. Put this back on here. And I'm not sure if it is to do with the uh, actual starter recall dropping on and breaking it. If anybody's watching this, I've seen this before and I can't remember what it was, whether I'd done it or it was just like that. I honestly can't remember, but we've got that back in there. That's back on top of that. Like that. And we get this ignition coil, which of course you know how to set. And I'm actually just going to give the edges of that a little bit of a clean up before I put that back. I've just put this uh, flywheel back on, I'm going to clean this off and I know I actually meant to do this before and I noticed it when I put it back together I was going to do it and I went in for a sandwich I think and I know because my mum and dad watched these videos my dad will have been sat there watching saying oh I couldn't have put that flywheel on like that I'd have had to clean that off so I've cleaned it off I've done it now look <laughs> so that's back on there I've given these the edges of this this contact point a bit of a clean as well just to try and help this out this wire hooks on from underneath like that and pop that back in there and I've shown you earlier how to set this up like by putting a little bit of card in the gap so I'm just going to quickly redo that now just get this in the right place and pop that in there like that and hopefully now we've got one without a hole in it's not sucking air this should run um, I'm hoping it'll run 100% perfect to be honest with you I know the issue is not with the car because we've uh, well diagnosed it haven't we, we've tried all that so let me go and get a piece of car let's just do what we did earlier maybe I should have checked that um, earlier I don't remember seeing the hole in the uh, in ET though, in this uh, coil so let's grab that let's get this to grab here right so that's grabbed it nice and even there let's tighten that up And then we're back to where we were, aren't we? But we haven't got a hole in the inlet manifold, so that's in there. Get them tight like that. Twist this round, get this out of here. And put that hook back in there like that. And I'm quite glad that I know really that it's not the carb now, so I wonder if while I'm here I'll just get this carb and put this back on. Hook that up, make sure it's got these the blue uh, the blue, the black and the white. O rings on the back and push that on like that. And now we've got no gaps. Kevin Spacey there, put him in. We can see what we're doing a little bit easier. I'm going to put this 10mm back at the front just to hold this in position. Get that started there. Let's do this cab up again. And now we've got everything back tight. We've got no hole, this inlet, and again, yeah, I'm just making sure all that goes around again. I'm going to get this recall cover now and have a quick look and just see exactly where it lands. Now, I'm not sure if you remember, but we actually swapped this. This wasn't the original one that came with this, so that sits well above it, even with that there, yeah, where the, the part was split before was in this gap here. Now, when I picked this up, as you probably remember, years ago when I started filming this video, it had so many different parts on and all sorts of stuff done to it. So, I'm not sure if they've just really over tightened something on or whatever they've done, but that sits nice and even on there with that through there. So, I'm, I'm quite happy I can put this actual recoil back on and try this again. Then, what I'll do is I'll just bolt this recoil on, we'll try it again now. Now we've got the uh, well, we've got the ignition coil set up again, we've got the gap right, we've got that clean, we've got the flywheel clean, we've got a new keyway in it, and we've not got a hole in this manifold. So I'm not going to put this big red plastic cover on wherever that's gone, I'm just going to bolt this cover back on and let's try it again and see if it runs even. Right, let's try this, I'm kind of uh, quietly confident, I've not tried it yet. I say on camera, I always do these things on camera, so... Um, now I know I've got no hole in there, I am, I'm actually quite confident that this is going to run 
at least better than it did before. And I want it to run perfect, to be honest. Oh. That is miles better. So that's a million times better than it was before. I haven't even got the air filter back on, that doesn't make much difference, but this is running as I want it to run. I'm going to quickly put this back together, show you the finished products, we'll put some photos on at the end of the video. So just stay tuned for just a little bit longer and I'll show you this as a finished product and exactly how to sell this for maximum profit. So a few little bits to tinker about with before I can sell this. One thing I love about these mowers is there's this screw under here. This is for the self-drive and you can just get this and move it slightly and you can actually lengthen um, or make the cable slightly tighter so it pulls up correctly and the self-drive just uh, sort of leaps into action a bit easy, easier than it does at the minute, it's all a bit slack that feels a bit more definite than it did before, that's great right I'll give you a little tip what I do with this is I get a great big W of the, my favourite WD-40 and I go around the whole lot of it and I basically see how it all goes black even the wheels, I go around it all, quickly wipe it over while it's all shining, the sun's on it I get 12 photographs and put them on Facebook Marketplace so I'm going to spend a few minutes, we're going to go around all this just clean it all off even the wheels, make them look all black you know, go to the extreme and you can charge a bit more can't you go around the whole thing, spray it up, make it look as clean and tidy as possible it takes two minutes and you will uh, be amazed what the photographs come out looking like so we got there eventually, and if you remember back, if I've got a photograph I'll put one on screen now. If you remember back to what this looked like when we picked it up for £20, look at it now. Painted, clean, gleaming, definitely worth £125. Everything works exactly as this should. Um, I'm going to film around this. I mean look at the paint, it's not brilliant, I just painted it with hammerite, you know. Nothing special, just the, the basic skills. This has been one of the worst mowers I've done in a long time. And actually it's been really yeah, quite good for anybody who wants to start repairing these for profit because I've pretty much shown you every single thing you need to learn there and covered everything I've learned over the last, coming up to 10 years this year in August. So I'm going to start this up in a second. I'm going to just tell you a few little things you need to do when you list this. Basically I list all these on Facebook Marketplace. You want to put every single item that you've done so you're going to put, if I'm going to write a description for this and spend five minutes, I'm going to put Mountfield SP470 petrol lawnmower. I'm going to tell them the cutting width, which is 17 inches or 45 centimetres. I'm going to put reliable Briggs and Stratton engine, height adjustable, front and rear, comes with grass box, has a self-drive, all cables in good condition, underside of the deck has been cleaned, the blade's been sharpened and balanced, the actual blade adapter has been checked, it's all safe. The carb's been serviced, the air filter's been serviced, it's got fresh oil in it, new plug and generally in good tidy working order, ready to cut and uh, get you through the summer. List as many benefits as you possibly can when you're going to sell these and you will get the price you want for it. I'm going to ask £125 for this on Facebook Marketplace and I will probably accept just over a 100 We've finally made it to the end, you are pleased to know. If you've watched all this again you can call yourself a super fan but this mower was one of the worst ones I've done in a long long time 
and at the end of this video you'll see a playlist of hundreds of videos all little tips and tricks on these Briggs and Stratton engines and don't forget down in the description there'll be a link to loads and loads of products to get yourself started repairing for profit all the little bits you'll need for mowers such as this it's a really good business you can be doing this out in your garden over the summer making yourself some extra profit if you have liked the video and um, you stuck with it to the end and I've helped you in some way please leave me a comment hit like and subscribe as well thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video thanks a lot for watching I really appreciate it